Early voting began this morning at 730. Officials say the lines are long. We'll explain one important issue you'll see on the ballot. And a mosque in Fort Smith was vandalized. The response from one of the members might surprise you. Those stories plus your weather and sports coming up. This is ASU TV News. From the Department of Media at Arkansas State University in Jonesboro. A State News. A State Weather. A State Sports. This is ASU TV News. Hello and welcome to the October 24th edition of ASU TV News. I'm Kirsten May. And I'm Austin Hyslip. Early voting began today and voters will see five ballot issues on their ballot this year, including two different proposals about medical marijuana. I took a look at both of those issues to find out their differences and how they might affect this election. Issue 6 is the Medical Marijuana Amendment. Issue 7 is the Medical Cannabis Act. They would both make marijuana legal for medicinal purposes, but political science professor Dr. William McLean says there are some important differences between the two. In issue six, I think probably has a, uh, the better chance of passing than issue seven. It's a little more restrictive. The medical marijuana amendment allows about 20 conditions to be treated with cannabis, whereas issue seven covers nearly 60 conditions. It would also be easier to add more to that list on issue seven. You can amend an act uh, without going back to the voters, uh, so without amending the Constitution again. There is also a provision in issue seven that lets any patient living farther than 20 miles from a dispensary grow their own marijuana. People become wary about sort of the not in my backyard syndrome. I don't want my next door neighbor growing marijuana around my children. This is not the first time medical marijuana has been on the ballot. Arkansans nearly passed a similar proposal four years ago. It, that was a, a, a very surprising outcome uh, as, as a political scientist that, it, that you know, given the, the conservative nature of the state, that it came as close to passing that it did. Craighead County Clerk Kate Holliday thinks more people know about the cannabis proposals on the ballot this time around. There's a lot of debate about, you know, the two different ones, all the differences between them. Uh, they're the, definitely the most talked about. Holiday and McLean both agree that the people most likely to vote for their proposals, young people and college students, aren't as likely to go cast a ballot. We had right at 6,270 people registered in that demographic. Now, of that demographic, only about 38% of that demographic turned out to vote. Uh, I, I think it has a low chance of passing. Most of the polls indicate that, that about 80% of our Kansans are in favor of, uh, of some form of, of medical marijuana. Uh, however, it's probably going to be a low turnout election. Uh, young voters are, are not very excited about either of the presidential candidates. Both men say what's important is letting your voice be heard whichever way you vote on these issues. Kirsten May, ASU TV News. Dr. McLean explained that if both issues pass, the Constitution says the one with the most votes for it will take effect. And the Cooper Alumni Center hosted its annual grad stock this past week. Graduating seniors had the opportunity to meet with Career Services and Brown's graduation to prepare for graduation. Gradstock is a one-stop shop uh, for graduating seniors at Arkansas State University. They have the opportunity to get measured for their cap and gown. Um, they can look at some different programs that are offered after you graduate, such as the Kentucky program where you can travel abroad at a very discounted cost. Gradstock also provided seniors the opportunity to have free professional headshots taken for resumes or their LinkedIn profiles and told them how to claim a free year of the Alumni Association membership. Authorities say a North Little Rock man who was found severely beaten has died and a suspect is in custody. Pulaski County Sheriff's Office Captain Carl Minden says 42-year-old Alexander Wiles died Saturday at a hospital after being found injured Friday night at a home in North Little Rock. Minden says the suspect was arrested shortly before Wiles' death for first-degree battery, and the charge may be upgraded to murder. Minden says Wiles was apparently beaten with a piece of lumber. And a controversy on the A-State campus robs a student from her chance to visit another country. Lauren Bennett says she hardly got a warning before she was forced to spend out one of her last semesters in Jonesboro. ASU TV News' Jorge Kikivic spoke to her and has more on this story. Out of the country, but now Lauren Bennett says she didn't get to go to Paris. While administrators announced Chancellor Tim Hudson's resignation and his wife Dee Dee Hudson also leaving, the university sent an email to a group of students, including Bennett, telling them they would not get to study abroad this semester. 
news that devastated her. I was excited to be off of work for mm -hmm. three whole months and be in another country and learn. So excited, she didn't renew her lease that was up and went ahead and registered for classes. She got the email less than a week before classes started and had to figure out what to register in. I had to get into classes that I didn't really need, mm -hmm. so I might push back my graduation. She said because she has a housing scholarship, Rebecca Oliver with honors was able to get her a dorm, but other students weren't that fortunate. Some students I know quit their jobs and like left their houses and couldn't have a place to stay and then they couldn't get hired back to their job. It's something she hopes makes administrators at A-State and universities across the country think twice about their actions. People do make mistakes, but I think you should be more careful because when you're in administration and you're taking care of other people, especially students, you have to look out for their best interests, not your own self-interest. I've contacted university officials and the study abroad program several times through email and the phone, and I still haven't heard back about whether they want to make a comment or not on how it's affecting students. For ASU TV News, I'm Jorge Kikivix. An 18-year-old charged in, double, in a double homicide wants to marry her boyfriend, who pleaded guilty to first-degree murder. Anastasia Roberts of Conway wrote to the Faulkney County Circuit Clerk's Office asking if it's possible to marry 18-year-old Connor Atchley. Roberts said it's important the two marry so they can write to each other while in prison. Atchley and 15-year-old Justin Staten believed guilty in the deaths of 66-year-olds Robert and Patricia Cogdale, who who had raised Staten as their grandson. Remember when mom used to tell you not to interrupt the adults? Well, now a certain adult running for president has become known for his interruptions. And as Jeannie Mose reports, Donald Trump's interjections may have spawned nasty women and puppets. We interrupt this story to bring you Donald Trump's interruptions. I did uh, not say to be that. Assaulted I did not say that. In an eating machine. Give me and a on the Your doctor, husband disagrees the with long you. Now, Hillary also chimed in a time or two. When a very beautiful hotel down the street, known as Trump. Made with Chinese steel. But I will tell you, I sat there. But she can't compete with the Donald's interjections, denying he's Putin's puppet. And no United puppet, States, no puppet. And it's pretty clear. You're the puppet. It's pretty clear you won't admit no, you're that the, the Russians have been. You're the puppet. No, you're the puppet. The exchange inspired actual puppetry. The Donald recycled his golden oldie. Wrong. A very clear fact that Wrong. before it, it almost felt like Trump was imitating Alec Baldwin. He's either not that rich, Wrong. not that charitable, Wrong. or he's never paid taxes in his life. Warmer. <laughs> but this was the Donald's most memorable interruption. The Such a nasty Trust one. Fund. The Twitterverse exploded. Make America nasty again. Nasty women for Hillary. That's President Nasty Woman to you. Songs featuring the word nasty. nasty we dredged up and remixed. Nasty. Nasty woman. Such a nasty woman. She's a nasty woman. By the way, I respect women more than anyone. Nasty woman joined with another Trumpism. We have some bad hombres here. In a Chelsea Handler tweet, are you a bad hombre or a nasty woman? Nasty woman won by a landslide. The day after the debate, the Donald himself was interrupted. Get that mosquito out of here. The Donald's like a pest with his interjections. When he started tweeting that the Emmys were rigged against Should have gotten it. The Emmy for best interruptions goes to Donald J. Trump. Wrong. And Jeannie Mo, CNN. Wrong. New York. Well, looking at weather, it's a great day in Jonesboro. Jorge Kikovic joins us from outside to give us an update. It feels great out here. There's a slight breeze, but overall fall-like temperatures for Jonesboro. It's just perfect weather for some, but there are rain chances later this week. I'll explain if that'll affect your home football game this weekend. Thanks, Jorge. After the break, we take a look at how Habitat for Humanity is making a difference here in Jonesboro. Plus, look at the surprising reaction from a member of a mosque that was vandalized when we come back to ASU TV News. ASU TV News. Habitat for Humanity is a nonprofit organization that builds houses for families who couldn't normally afford a house on their own. 
The nationally known organization is making a difference in our community. I loved it. I loved the whole idea of working with your fellow classmates to just work for a common goal, and that being um, building a house for a Jonesboro citizen. High school students are building houses, not completely on their own, but with the help of Habitat for Humanity. Habitat has been working with the Jonesboro School District for over a year now. A relationship Jonesboro High School student Mark Havdala says is worth donating his time to. You are working. It is a visible and legitimate donation of your time. You are actually see what you are doing be put to work. And that one of the best part is an actual Jonesboro citizen will actually get that house. Jonesboro Habitat Executive Director Michael Sullivan says it doesn't begin or end with a house. The students play a vital role in the entire organization. They, they volunteer, they educate, um, they fundraise, and they advocate on behalf of Habitat for Humanity. Students who spent months putting together a floor plan for this house will begin putting up walls in the coming weeks. The house being built now is the first that Jonesboro School District has helped with. Assistant Superintendent Sue Castleberry says the school district is including almost every campus, giving each student an opportunity to help. Uh, our news crews from math and science will come and do some video work. And so uh, every, almost every campus, uh, we will take some of the things like some of the woodwork things and actually take that back to the art teachers at the elementary so the kids can paint. Castleberry says the students are actually teaching her things as well. Last year, the students taught me how to, um, I know how to measure now and actually cut siding. Habitat for Humanity and JPS have created a relationship that's benefiting the entire community. For ASU TV News, I'm Austin Heislip. Now an update on that story. The foundation shown in that package was actually has a house on it now. Construction began a couple of weeks ago and they plan to have a completed house by early next year. A man in Cincinnati is in desperate need of a kidney. Ralph Beach spends 10 hours each day on dialysis. The 66-year-old has been waiting for a transplant for more than three years, so Beach and his wife took it upon themselves to find a donor. They put up 125 signs around town asking for potential donors to call or visit their website, kidneyforalph.com. His wife also advertises the information on her car. So far, the signs have generated about 65 calls. They say now all they can do is wait. An Arkansas city says its ordinance banning discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity does not violate a state law that was intended to prevent such local protections and argues the state's highest court doesn't need to weigh in on the law's constitutionality. Attorneys for the city of Fayetteville told the state Supreme Court on Friday that a judge who upheld the ordinance didn't rule on the constitutionality of a 2015 state law. Attorney General Leslie Rutledge has asked the courts to strike down Fayetteville's ordinance. Fort Smith police are searching for three suspects who they said are responsible for spray painting graffiti all over a local mosque. Police said the mosque was vandalized early Thursday morning. Joe Ellison reports. In the top right corner, you can see two people walk up to the Islamic Prayer Center on South 28th Street. One stays behind where the sign out front was tagged. The other, apparently completely unaware of the surveillance camera on the porch, comes right up to it. They not deserve this. As a Muslim people live in Fort Smith, Arkansas. When Hisham Yassin, a board member of the mosque, came to pray, he saw what the vandals left behind. We never have no problem with nobody. Even Islam doesn't have no kind of violence for nobody. Islam is a peace religion. The suspects did damage the sign, the garage, and the porch. And that sign said, go home. He don't know, it's my home just across the street. In the video, you could only see one person clearly, but there are two others at the end of the driveway. Yassin has a message for one of them. And he don't know the meaning and the beauty of Islam. And we invite him to come to our mosque and come sit with us and tell us what's the, what's the, what's the problem. Well, looking at weather, it was a beautiful weekend. Jorge's here to tell us if we can expect that for the rest of our week. We should, but there should, there may be a chance of um, rain later this week. I'll explain that coming up in my forecast. ASU TV News.
Hello and welcome back to ASC TV News. We're tracking our current conditions right now. It is 71 degrees out there. It's sunny skies, no clouds. It's been a change for the last time that we've been on air. We've been telling you that it's been like around 70 degrees, but we've seen cloud coverage. Today, that's not the case. We do have some um, wind from the northeast coming down at eight miles per hour. If you look at the satellite for the rest of the um, state, you can see that Jonesboro is cloud coverage is very open right there, but the rest of the state is not seeing that um, situation right there going on. It, it is seeing some cloud coverage. For the U.S. radar for tomorrow, you can see that there are some showers for tomorrow in other parts of the country, but we are clear in Arkansas for, the, for tomorrow. And in temperatures, it looks like it's going to be, a, um, it's, it shows that tomorrow we're still going to stick around 70s, but it's going to be at the upper 70s. Um, lower in, in Texas and stuff, we're seeing up to 80s. That may come up in later in the um, forecast, but not right now. We are just going to stick around 70s. In the northeast, it looks like we're going to be around the 60 degrees um, area, maybe 50s in some places. And then tonight, it looks like it's going to be down to 49 degrees. Clear skies, no cloud coverage again. And the winds are going to come from the northeast, but this time it's going to be five miles per hour. So it's going to be a lot. The breeze is going to be less. And then we're going to have tomorrow, we are having sunny skies again. But this is um, no cloud coverage again, 75 um, degrees for tomorrow. The low is going to go to 54 degrees. So it's going to be roughly the same for both tonight and tomorrow, or today and tomorrow. And for the seven day, there's something that I want to address. I, I've talked to you about Monday, and I've talked about Tuesday. Wednesday is the one that we're looking at. There is a 20 to 30 percent chance on a Wednesday, but those chance, the chances are 20 percent for during the day, so the chances are slight during the day. The main 30 percent chances are during the later um, hours. So if we may not see, most of us may not see rain at, the, at all. Some people are not going to see rain, but um, we just want to keep you in mind that you might want to carry an umbrella just in case you're one of those unlucky people. For the rest of the week, we have mostly sunny skies and sunny skies. We may hit 80 degrees on Friday, but then look at the lows um, for the rest of the week. It sh they hit 56 and 59, um, even 53 at one point on Saturday. But that's great for the, um, home, or the home football game this Saturday, and we'll go back to you guys for more. On Thanks, that. Jorge. Really looking forward to those cooler temps. All right, Cody, I heard the Cubs are going to the World Series. They are, and we've got to look at the Cubs who are, who are going to the World Series for the first time in decades and more when we come back to ASU TV News. ASU TV News. Welcome back to ASU TV News. I'm Cody Moore sitting in for Jaleesa Benton for your ASU TV Sports Report. The Chicago Cubs are headed to the World Series. Yes, you heard correctly. The Cubbies go to their first World Series after a 5-0 win against the LA Dodgers. Chicago fans lost their minds in the streets after the big win for the team, considering this is the first time in 71 years that the Cubs have won a National League championship. The Cubs will go after their, the Cubs go after their first World Series championship since way back in, in 1908 when they faced the Cleveland Indians. Game one of the World Series starts tomorrow night in Cleveland. The New Zealand National Rugby Union team and the All Blacks set for a record-winning 18 consecutive test matches, matches. This win came less than a year after becoming the first country to win back-to-back -back World Cups. Julian Sevilla scored two tries and set up a third in the half, second half, leading them to the victory team. This was, all, this was led all by cap, Blacks captain Kieran Reid. The next game, November 6th, in the Chicago against the Ireland. The NFL tried very hard to eliminate tie games from happening, but last night during the Seahawks versus Cardinals game, it was proof that if you get two teams together with good defenses, they can shut down the whole thing and a tie is possible. We start in the fourth where we see Russell Wilson who throws the pass to Tanner McAvoy for the 10 yard gain, but short the first down. This brings the score to three to zero. Steven Hoshka makes the 40 yard field goal and the game is tied. Now if you see a score, now the team scores a field goal during overtime and then the team will win the game. Cardinals take their shot at the goal. And then Seahawks are going after the Cardinals and then they take him down. And then we're going to run and we're going to see the Cardinals take their shot at a field goal. In just a second. And here it is and he goes to kick the ball and does he make it? 
He does not make it at all. So close, the fans are going crazy in the crowd. So let's watch that one more time. And misses. All right, then we're gonna go into the Seahawks and see how they do with this goal. We got them running and then they also get tackled by a Cardinal and they are down. And they're gonna try for their field goal as well. And do they make it? Let's see, and no, they do not make the goal at all. And now the game is tied six to six and that is how that one ends. The Arkansas State women's bowling team defeated Sam Houston State in its first match of bracket play, but fell to the Bearcats in a rematch in the title game to the finish as the runner-up at the Wildcat Invitational hosted in Orlando, Florida. The Red Wolves opened their first match with 153-140 to 140 and 225-171. to 171. A State posted a big 236-187 to 187 win in Game 5 and clinched a 4-2 win with a 170 and 157 win in Game 6. This win will take A-State women's bowling to the championship match. That's our sports for today. Stay with us for more news after the break. ASU TV News. The NEA Humane Society is overflowing with pets needing forever homes. Cody Moore visited the shelter and shows us our pet of the week. All right, you guys, this is Madonna. She's a pit bull here at the Humane Society. She's about two years old. She's been here for about two months, too. And she is the perfect people dog. Doesn't really like other dogs, but she is perfect with other people. So if that's your kind of dog, then you can come adopt Madonna today at the Humane Society here on Highland. Well, that dog was super, super cute. So if anyone wants to go out to the Humane Society and get it, that will be a great pet for someone's family. And that will do it for today's edition of ASU TV News. Remember, you can keep up with our updates and story developments on our Twitter feed at ASU TV News and catch up with what's happening around you by liking our ASU TV News Facebook page. For Jorge Kikivix, Jaleesa Benton, and our producers, Danielle Spence and Destiny Quinn, I'm Austin Heislip. And I'm Kirsten May. Have a great afternoon.